Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're all here with us on this very special Sunday on All Saints Celebration, where we remember all those who've gone on ahead. We celebrate those who are in our lives right now that continue to influence us for good. And we challenge ourselves uh, how we continue to live into sainthood as people who believe in Jesus Christ. And so it's a very special day today, and we welcome all our families who are with us. I'd remind you, after the 1030 service, you're welcome to take an angel home uh, in memory of your family. Uh, But again, if you could wait till 1130 to do that, we'd appreciate that. All right. Well, announcements. We're going to need your poinsettia orders this week. I know it's super early, but that's what the florist said, so that's what we have to uh, go by, Um, and so uh, they want them in by the 12th, and so we need them next by next Sunday, so please get those in, and next Sunday we have a very special veteran celebration that you won't want to miss, and so I hope that many of you can return to join us for that. Also, um, for announcements in two weeks, we will have on the 19th our Commitment Sunday, where we make our commitments for 2024. Um, I've been handing out uh, your cards, uh, your gift statements and cards, and there's more out in the foyer if I've missed you and you want to commit. And I have some of yours, so um, after church, I'll try to get the rest of them handed out. But um, if you want to commit for 2024, please take a card. That's a good thing to do, uh, not only financially, but it's a great thing to do because we say we're going to commit to reading the Bible, or we're going to commit to maybe joining a small group, or we're going to commit some way to, again, taking a step forward towards Christ and becoming more like Christ in our daily lives. And so that's a great time, and we'll collect those again on the 19th. And if you're not able to be with us because of Thanksgiving, (laughs) then uh, you're certainly welcome to turn those in anytime to the church office, and we'll take them. And on the 19th at 6 o'clock, we'll be going to the New Life Church uh, for our community Dwight Ministerial Association Thanksgiving service, and I hope all of you can join us for that. Um, Father John will be preaching this year, so that'll be a wonderful time to be together and see other uh, people of Christ, and again, that's at six o'clock. Well, we have lots of birthdays this week, so happy birthday to Ken uh, today. Avery's is tomorrow. We got Shelly's on, uh, let's see, I think that's Wednesday. And then Link and Pam is on, uh, I guess the 9th is Thursday. And Link and Pam are on Friday. And then Nathan, Jill, and Rudy are all on Saturday on Veterans Day. So happy birthday to all those folks having birthdays. And today is Shelly and Kevin's 40th wedding anniversary. They come to the 1030 service. So congratulations to them. All right. That's all the announcements I have right now. God is good, friends. And all the time. I told a story. I have one more announcement. (laughs) So today we are offering communion as we do on the first Sunday of every month and especially in All Saints Sunday. And how we take communion for all those folks who might be visiting is the ushers will invite you to come down the center aisle. We'll have two servers with uh, bread to You can take a piece of bread, and then you can either come to the altar rail, or if you prefer to take by intinction, I'll have the common cup. And also, I will have the gluten-free bread if that's something you need. And if you don't prefer to take communion in that fashion, we also offer individual cups out in the foyer. And so that's many options that you can take, and those online, that'll just be a reminder for you to get your elements ready so you can partake with us. All right, now let's prepare ourselves to worship.
Amen. Thank you, Ellie. Let's join together in our call to worship. Grace and peace to be to you from God, who is and who was and is the all come, the Almighty, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler over all. The Holy Spirit is the breath of life. Breathe on us this day, O Lord, that we may glorify you and praise your holy name. Let's stand together and join in singing for all the saints. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. seated. Let's pray together. Eternal God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses whose lives bear testimony to the power of your redeeming love. Help us faithfully live that love that we may receive our inheritance in Jesus, which is eternal life. We ask this in the name of the one who died and rose from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now our choir is with us this morning.
you, choir. Amen. And now we'll invite Marion Denker up to help me with our All Saints Remembrance, and Brandon will be providing a bell tone for us <laughs> as we remember our beloved. We always light a candle at the end uh, for all who aren't named out loud here today, and so uh, we'll do that today as well. Verla Zimmerman. This, I should have waited for Brandon. Thank you. That's, we're fine. We're fine. We'll start over. Verla Zimmerman. Harold Bissey. Phyllis Geshwin. Marty Ganaway. Janice Madsen. Don Scott. Glenda German. Donna Earring. And all those that we name in our hearts right now. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Number us, O Lord, with your saints. We thank you for these dear ones that we have named out loud for all the many ways that they touched and blessed our lives, for the powerful truth that in your love their lives never end, and for the invitation you give all of us to follow Jesus, to believe in him and to believe in you, and to know that your house has many rooms, and that as we believe and trust in Jesus, you prepare a special room for us just as you have for all these that have gone on this year. We thank you, Lord, for their great witness and that they are cheering us as we finish our course of faith. Help each of us, O oh Lord, to live as saints, knowing that in Jesus we are redeemed, empowered, and can do all things. We thank you for that victory. We come to you always in his precious and powerful name. And all God's people say, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Marianne. Well, as we continue our time of offering, uh, we invite you to fill out your attendance registers with any information we might need. Um, if you'd like to give to uh, love boxes or Christmas for kids, you can do that during any time in the offering. You can take an offering envelope and take it with you and bring it back. And just mark uh, on there, love boxes or Christmas for kids. Make all your checks out to the church, and we will get that processed in the way you, you want it to be, of course. And that's true for other natural disasters or um, if you want to support refugees or the war um, and the huma humanitarian aid to the wars in all over the world and Ukraine and and Gaza and Israel especially right now all those are ways you can do that and many others through our church offerings and uh, we appreciate all who give we like I've been handing out the giving statements and the and the cards and invitations for next year so it's an important part of our worship and it's an important part of our statement of faith to say, we trust you, Lord, and we trust you so much that we're going to give to you and to others, knowing that as you promised, as God has promised to us, when we give, so we receive. Again, also, if you have any uh, prayer concerns that need to come up to the front, you can also hand those to an usher, and they'll make sure I get them. Well, let's, with joy and thanksgiving, uh, present our gifts and our offerings to the Lord at this time. Will the ushers please come forward?
Loving and gracious God, we thank you so many, so much for the many ways that you bless us. We thank you for our friends and family. We thank you for the love that is shared with other people of faith around the world. And we especially thank you for the love that you've given us through all the saints who've gone on ahead. Comfort us, strengthen us, and give us your peace. And Lord, we ask right now as we return a portion of our many material possessions back to the work of your kingdom, that you multiply these gifts, that you accept us who give, and that you empower us, Lord, to be generous, not only with our money, but with our time, our talents, and with a, a listening and forgiving ear. We thank you, Lord, for the many ways that you bless us and empower us to serve you. All that come through the power of your Holy Spirit, through the precious love and name of Jesus. We pray all things in his name. And all God's people say, amen. You may be seated. So we come to our time of prayer concerns. Um, we have to report that Dosha Hancock was taken to the hospital um, this morning. And so we need to keep Dosha, Adele, and their family. She was having trouble breathing. And so we'll follow up on that and find out what's going on uh, with her. Dave Taylor is going to be needing some eye surgery, so we need to keep him in our prayers. Uh, Sharon Bossard continues to have testing on her legs, so please keep her in your prayers. Uh, Trisha Proak, who comes to late services, sister, is on hospice, so please keep them in your prayers. And Lita Leach continues to have uh, digestive issues, so please continue to pray for Lita for healing and strength. Um, we also want to keep all our travelers in our prayers and those who are continuing the harvest. We thank God that several have gotten done, but others are still continuing, and so we pray for them for peace and uh, for them to finish the good work that God has given them to do. And uh, continue to pray, of course, for the war areas in um, Israel and Gaza, all the children and victims of those kind of terrible tragedies um, in Ukraine. And, of course, please keep all the folks battling cancer in your prayers and others that you might have on your hearts and minds. Well, let us take all these and our unspoken concerns before God at this time. Let us pray together. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful um, that you've given us this day as a time set apart um, for remembering. And today we are remembering the many ways you blessed us. We've had such an unusual week with uh, basically a blizzard on Halloween. <laughs> and we then immediately had a warm-up, and now we have another beautiful day in front of us, another fall day as we enter the season of Thanksgiving. And so, Lord, remind us to be thankful for all the different gifts you bless us with and for the things that even are difficult because you will use all things, um, you will transform things into our good, even things that aren't good, that you, if we walk with you, will provide some good out of it. And one way that happens sometimes is that we can help others that might face the same challenges. So, Lord, as we continue to walk with you, we just pray for the people we love that have challenges that need special blessings and encouragement. Right now, we think of Dosha and Del, and we pray that all that is being done for Dosha will help her. And we pray that your peace and strength will be on Del and his family right now, and that you will just provide all that they need. We lift up Dave and Sharon and ask that the doctors will use good wisdom in helping them with their health issues. And we pray for Lita and pray again that you will deliver her from this terrible problem that she's been dealing with for so long. We continue to beseech you for her healing, Lord, and for wisdom for her doctors and care teams. 
We ask, Lord, that you bless Tricia and her family at this hard time with her sister is on hospice and others who are walking those steps with her. We pray, O oh Lord, that you comfort all who are grieving today. And we especially pray for those who are in war areas and facing things that we can't even imagine. Lord, provide for them, but especially for the children and the innocents. Please protect them and strengthen them and be with all the response people who are, who are trying to care for them. Lord, we also lift up all who are traveling. We pray you surround them with your protection. We pray for those who are battling cancer and we ask that you'll give them victory. We thank you for the good medicines that have continued to come about. And we pray for the researchers and all who are seeking cures for these various diseases we face. But we know true healing comes from your hand. For any that are here or that we know that need your healing, we ask, Lord, you just pour that into their lives right now. That you pour your mercy upon us. As you're examining our hearts, O oh Lord, we know that we often fail to live into your love fully. And we especially fail to share your love with others. We ask that you forgive us that you redeem us, and that you transform us so that when others see us, they'll know that we belong to you through Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the great gift you've given us in Jesus. Soon we'll be celebrating his birth at Christmas, and that's such a wonderful time. But the power comes in the cross and in the resurrection, that especially on a day like today, we are reminded death does not have the last word, that you have the last word, and in Jesus, that word always is victory. Help us today to cling tightly to the promise of the resurrection to eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for the many ways you bless us. Help us to live into sainthood, knowing that doesn't necessarily mean perfection, but it does always mean joy and blessing. We thank you for that, Lord, and we praise you, coming to you always through the power and gift of your Holy Spirit and through the precious and powerful, victorious name of Jesus. We continue in our time of prayer, praying as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, as is our tradition, we read our scripture together, and so um, I'll have to apologize ahead of time. When I was in seminary, I had a professor that says, never apologize, but I feel like I must. You know I have trouble reading anyway, but I know this passage by heart from another translation. <laughs> so I'll be probably saying that translation instead of the one we're using, which is the New Living Translation. But let's share God's word in our own voices and uh, let's share together Rome, uh, Hebrews 12. We'll be doing verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 13. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet 
so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to our great God. Amen. Well, a church was uh, pouring a new sidewalk in front of their building, and as they did so, a young mother was there with her little sweetie, and she had asked the leaders if she could put her little sweetie's footprints in the wet cement, and they had agreed. I know, it seems like an unusual request. But every time anyone would go in or out of that church, they would see those little bitty footprints in that cement. Now, she had placed that little sweetie's footprints facing into the church. She wanted her little child to go in God's direction. And she wanted everyone to be reminded that that's our job to go in God's direction. Now, we know it might be into a church building. It's certainly always to the cross of Jesus Christ. But that's our challenge for today, to ask that question and to understand the truth that Jesus Christ died for all sinners and all saints were sinners at one time. And so what direction are you headed today? What, where are your feet going? What path are you walking on? And if you find yourself weary, I'm finding oh, the longer I live, the sore my knees get. I find my grip is not so strong anymore when I try to open a can of sal- or jar of salsa. No, <laughs> it takes a lot more muscle than I used to think it would. And so we are invited to make sure our feet are headed towards God's challenge and God's direction, and that we are numbered, we are numbered with God's saints in our lives right now, that we are God's people, and that we can, as God's people, that we can make sure we're headed in God's direction. And so when you consider this day, We need to lift up that truth and the power of the gospel that God invites all sorts of people into his kingdom. Now, some of you know that in our household, we're Illini fans. I know, sometimes it's iffy. (laughs) But we are Illini fans, and right now they're in their football season, although they had a nice victory in their basketball game the other night. But uh, it was interesting, um, we thought, after the game was over yesterday, and uh, they had just won barely, <laughs> but they won, and uh, they were interviewing a couple key players in, on the team, on the football team. One was the second string quarterback, and one was uh, the um, wide receiver, Isaac, and uh, both of them, as they were being interviewed about the game and celebrating about some good plays they had made, both of them gave a Christian testimony on national TV that anyone could hear. Now, we found that remarkable because we would not necessarily number with the Saints football players on a line eye football. In fact, if you know too many young men that are in their early, eight, late 18, 18, 19, and then into their early 20s, you know that, especially in sports, that they might not live the kind of sainthood life that we think about when we think about all the people we've lifted up today. So remember that God can number with his saints all kinds of people that The challenge is that we choose to accept God's invitation to live as his saints. And we choose to then live out our faith and to walk with him along the journey. And so we remember people who said yes to God and who blessed us because they did. Look at some of these saints. When I think about the example of these folks here that uh, we have, and I have more over here on the next slide too, I'll be moving back and forth. These folks here on the first page, I especially think of like Glenda, Phyllis, Janice, and Donna. 
I can't imagine how many extra pounds they added to people's lives. <laughs> Me, I know, and I gladly took them. <laughs> and Don Scott, too. He would go down. When I first met Don Scott, he told me, he said, Pastor, I have another church that I belong to. And let me tell you, I was like, no, that is not right. <laughs> and he was very adamant about it. So I said, okay, Don. And then I found out it was Sonneman Church, and then he went down there to feed breakfast to kids. Now, is that not an awesome gift to do? And I wonder, whose mansion are the grannies in having their coffee? And also, I can see, um, especially Glenda, but I'm sure all of them, and Donna too, really, uh, and Janice probably too, but I could see him saying, you know, I don't need all this room. <laughs> I don't need this big house, right? <laughs> that would be them. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, Har and Harold too, he was so humble and hardworking, I, all of them. I'm sure they were just like, what? Heaven is so awesome. And these folks, you know, these are all different family members and folks that also have blessed people's lives and helped people and, and lived out their faith. And some were better at it than others. That's the wonderful invitation of faith. And some never served our church at all, but served other churches. I found a couple parents. So if you're looking at your mom on there, I just I decided I'd look them up and see if I could find them. And I missed some people, I'm sure. Because our last candle is not just for folks in our church or folks we've done. It's for all the different folks that have lost loved ones. But all these people helped as needed, blessed people, and, and called upon the Lord. And so today I invite you to ask God to number you as his saint. Our faith is built on remembrance, on recollection. And that can be both good and painful because I know sometimes I remember, I often remember things that, that are painful. But I'm, we're listening right now. We like to listen to Hidden Brain and, uh, on NPR, and um, he always has some different. But he has a person right now, and I haven't got to hear the whole podcast yet, about rewriting our stories because our stories that we tell ourselves affect our lives. And so God invites us to rewrite our stories to include his goodness and his glory and his impact on each other's lives. And so we remember God's story. And if you read the Old Testament, if you've read the Bible, or even the New Testament about the disciples, you know those people were not perfect. They did a lot of clunky things. I loved our um, offertory was... Uh, quiet faith, or I think was the name of it. But some of us have noisy faith, right? Like me. I, I, how many people I've known throughout the years that wish I had quiet faith, <laughs> that pray for me to have quiet faith, but I don't. And yet, I believe I'm numbered with one of the saints. In fact, that's my hope. That's my whole reason to exist to number with God's saints, to be one of God's people. And so that's why today we can take courage. We, we can take hope. We can strengthen our arms. We can try to lay aside the sin that's tripping us up. We can try to, to, get, to hold on to the one important thing of Christ that gives us power to do all sorts of things and not to lose heart and not to give up. And that struggle sometimes transforms us into something really amazing. Just like a butterfly struggles to get out of a cocoon to be its glorious creation. As we struggle sometimes, we're being transformed into something wonderful. Now, part of our celebration today, I decided to do something that I've not done before. And I decided to recognize a couple saints that are joining, have joined, not are joining. They did it a while back. And of course, Pastor Mary never got around to it. So we'll invite Miss Jody to come down here. She's here with us today. But here's a couple people that we number with the saints of the Lord that you might know that joined as full members this past year. Uh, Jody Savola and Jan McLean. Jan comes to second service, but Jody's here with us at first service. 
Now, Jody um, is often in the AV booth. <laughs> Come on to the center. <laughs> she was so thrilled to do this. <laughs> and so they, that's fine. You can just stay right here by the candles. Come around here. There you go. And Jody, for those who don't know our sweet Jody, Jody is our church treasurer. So she keeps us in line with all, she's a certified public accountant, and so she knows our stuff, and she keeps us in line, and, and she runs the A B booth, so when you know I'm screwing things up, you know, Matt has someone to look over and go, <laughs> and she helps run our camp. So let's welcome Jody, and you've seen Jody around, and one thing Jody did this week, she was out freezing with us on Halloween at cool. handing out candy for the kids at Ferris's house, so let's welcome Welcome our Jody, who is already part of us. We appreciate you. We love you. you Miss Jan, she works with Kids Club, and you all know she does UMW and was making ham loaves, and and uh, she teaches the kindergarten class at Kids Club, and as I said, has been very faithful to come. And so if you'd like to be numbered with our Dwight United Methodist Saints, please see me. I'd love to have you as a member. And membership means many different things. It means we'll share and grow. It means we'll continue forward together. And it doesn't mean that we'll be perfect, but it does that we'll be striving for perfection in love. That's, that's what it means. And that as we go together, we're encouraged that we can lift each other up um, and that we can share, yeah, I face that. So take that new grip with your tired hands. You know, if you've been holding something, sometimes just to take and release and take a new hold really gives you a new grip. And strengthen those old knees. Make straight a path for yourself and for those who come behind us. That's part of the wonderful work that Jody helps with the youth group and Jan helps with the, the children's ministry. That's important work we do. But not just for children, it says here, for those who are weak, that's like potato chip queen, me, right? That's the kind of thing we're talking about, people who struggle with stuff and who are lame. That means your walk isn't perfect. Help make things straight for them so they won't fall, but they'll become strong too because we're in together. Know this truth today, friends, that these folks knew. We don't walk alone. We walk with each other. But even more importantly, Jesus walks with each of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we have a great cloud of witnesses. I just picture them sitting on those little rails, cheering us on, encouraging us, so that we can go and keep our feet in God's direction. And that we too will hear one day, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into your reward. Because Jesus loves us and always is with us. Let us pray. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, just fill us in fresh ways with your Holy Spirit. Encourage us on our journeys. And as we prepare now to remember by taking communion the greatest gift given, which is Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. As we take the body and blood of Christ, help us in new ways to want to be saints. Not to live boring, dull lives, no, but to live lives that shine in glory and are amazingly powerful to do good things for the kingdom. And we know that, that joy is such an important part of our walk of faith. And laughter is such a part of your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to be numbered with your saints this day. In Jesus' precious name we come. And all God's people say, amen. Friends, again, as we come to Christ's table at United Methodist, we invite all. And so you're welcome to come. Now, if that's not your normal faith tradition, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, that's okay. It's okay. But you are welcome to come. And again, the ushers will help you down the center aisle. And again, I'll have the gluten-free and the cup. So let us prepare ourselves.
Friends, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to the Father for it, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take and eat of this, all of you, for this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they supped, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to the Father for it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and drink of this, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread in whatever forms it may present itself, and we drink this cup again in whatever forms it may present itself, we are proclaiming the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Let us pray together. Loving and gracious Heavenly Father, pour out your gifts of love and your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and juice that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for this world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. O Lord, through our time together, make us one with you and one with each other in ministry to all the world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Truly, Almighty Father, all glory and honor is yours now and forever. And all God's people say, amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, all is ready. Come to Christ's table.
And thanks be to our great God as he does give us the victory over all things in Jesus Christ. Hear the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to our great God. Amen. Amen. Well, let's stand together as we prepare to depart and sing all verses of our closing hymn when we all get to heaven. the benediction, friends, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us run our race with perseverance, keeping our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord, and knowing with sure confidence, our God goes with us every step of the journey, and nothing is impossible with him. Go forth in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And know, good friends, you are God's saints. Keep your feet going in the right direction. Amen. Amen.